Uh, welcome to Coastal Forage in the Craig Evans. We're down uh, on the low spring tide again, down in a lovely place in West Wales. Uh, hoping to turn some stones over today. Not foraging, just seeing what uh, wildlife we can see and explain what it is. Right, left this rock up and see what we got. Trying to keep it back straight. Wow, look at all that. We've got a number of things there now. We've got mermaid purses, which are the eggs of dogfish. A number of pie crust or xantho crabs. There's a nice, nice big one there. There's pretty colours. And under the rock. Look. Come in, David. You see the uh, porcelain crabs. On the bottom there, we've got a netted dog whelk. To carnivorous, and they feed on detritus. Uh, a few sea squirts. Some little sting wrinkles. I just found this little uh, Macropoda spider crab now. Not get much bigger than that. They cover themselves with sponges for camouflage. So we'll put everything back. And if you can look down there, quite a rare sight for picking the rock up, you can actually see a sea cucumber with its tentacles coming out. Remember the starfish family. Um, like I always explain, to replace the rocks back near enough as they were. Right, there's a good looking stone now. Let's see what's under there. Straight back, lift it up. Wow, yeah, plenty of uh, pie crust clubs. But if you look there, there's a butterfish. We'll put it in the uh, Let's give it a little look. Now this is called a butterfish, or a gunnel. It's a, a cold water species. And in this particular area, we're lucky because we're at the uh, junction of cold water species and warm water species. So this is a cold water species and feeds on small invertebrates and worms. Later on, hopefully, we're going to catch some clingfish, which are warm water species, to show that the, the the mixture of species in the same area. It's a good looking uh, rock now. On the surface, as you can see, it's covered with some nice uh, sponges. Uh, a couple of seaweeds, as in sea lettuce, and Irish moss. A bit of dulse. And underneath, we've got... No, don't wait now. A number of pike crabs again, among other things. And inside there, in this whelk shell, there's a hermit crab. I put it back, and the crabs are right there. And underneath again, you can see that we have one of the longest organisms in the world, which is a bootless worm. Sometimes they can grow to uh, I believe about 150 yards, 150 feet long. And again, you can see we've got different species. There's a, there's a type of scallop there. And this crab, now the young pie crust. And just to show that we have different colours, we come in purples, browns. Um, yeah, so again, it's important to put the Put the stone back as we found it. That's on this stone now, we picked up a little uh, shiny. Uh, I think it's a female. They get about twice the size of that. And uh, they can actually uh, breathe air on occasions. And they don't really need to be submerged all the time. They can live quite happily under damp seaweed for a while until the tide comes in. And these pectoral fins, what they can do they can actually walk over over the shore and go from, from pond to pond. So we put them back there. Have a look at this stone now. What have we got? Oh yeah, some nice bristle stars.
I'm going to put these in the Yeah, I've just caught this little uh, clingfish now. It's a Connemara clingfish. You can tell because it's got the, the red spots. Um, it's got like a duck bill mouth. And like I've explained in previous videos, it's called a clingfish because it's got this, this pectoral fin that's got a sucker on it which sticks to the rocks. So when you get rough seas, it'll uh, stay where it is. So we'll have a look underneath now. Suckers. Right, we found some nice stones now with water underneath. We're going to lift them up and to see what life's there. I'm going to put whatever's there into the tray so we can have a better look. And you can see there's plenty of delts on the top. And you can see some top shells. Oh, yeah. And there's a crystal star. And plenty of the old Xantho or Pikeless crabs. And there's the broad clawed porcelain crabs with filter feeders. And on the top of the rock, you can see a shore urchin covering himself with uh, protective uh, pebbles. Let's move to one side again now, see what else. Any fish in there? Easy crabs. Okay, nothing else. So what we'll do, we'll put everything else back now. Where it came from. Right, this, this door now looks nice. Smooth on the top, the limpets which have been grazing with the different algae and the seaweeds. Dulse again with some uh, sea lettuce. And underneath, ah, there we are. A couple of things there. There's the usual, uh, very common uh, porcelain crabs. However, there's a nice little tom pot plenty there. You've seen these before. Put him in there. In there. Okay. There he is. Pretty little fish. If you look at him close up now, you can see his uh, sharp teeth and his pectoral fins. And you've got one long lateral fin on, on the back. His dorsal fin, I mean, sorry. And just above his eyes, you can see two little appendages. And this, this beautiful little fish. It feeds on invertebrates and small uh, fish, but it can also eat uh, anemones. Just under that stone, and we just found this uh, little uh, show goby. That's about uh, half its full size and pretty thing. Feeds on invertebrates, whatever else it can eat, and it's got a nice little orange tip to its dorsal fin there. Very common, yeah. I'll pick this stone up and see what's there. Oh yes, look at the colours in that. There's a lovely purple coloured Xantho crab and a small juvenile edible crab. And there's a broad claw of porcelain crabs. And as you can see there's uh, lots of other Picross crabs mainly uh, down there. Right, this looks a good stone now because there's water underneath, it's a big stone and doesn't look as if it's been tumbled because it's got the seaweed on the top I'm going to lift it, hopefully you'll find some fish Oh, oh clocking glass Beautiful fish okay. Right, and this is a corking glass now, we're going to try and tickle him out Take your time. Right. Give me a 
or something now. I can feel him. So, here he comes. Got him. Beautiful. Yeah. Just to show you. Obviously a member of the last family. That's They're more or less fully grown, they don't get much bigger than that. And if you look at the mouth, it's got little teeth and it feeds on limpets and hard things and small crabs it crushes. Um, these actually pair up and they actually build nests and protect the young in the pools. I used to keep them in my aquarium. But uh, very handsome fish. We'll put him back safely. We'll put him back under the storm where he was in the first place. There we are. So there he goes. Oh, that way. Oh, over there. Over there. Over there. Over there. That's where you were. Right, you're under there. Huh? Nice looking rock now. In a previous video, this is where I caught that small lobster. See what's underneath it this time. Clear it away slowly. And just have a look. What goes where? A few fish there, see them? There you know, there's uh, shore rocklings, another one there, zipping about. See the crab in the hole. Oh, there's another grass. Right, there's a fish going under there. I think it might be a grass or a gooby. I'll stick my hand in the back. Can you see him there? It's a grass, it's a corking grass, another one smaller, there we are. They come in show again to breed this time of year, uh, yeah, pretty little thing again, so we'll uh, look at his teeth here, <laughs> let me put him back, no, under that stone. There's a nice uh, anemone. Uh, I'm not sure what species because I haven't got my glasses on. But judging by the uh, fact that it's got little bits of shells on it, could well be uh, a daily anemone. So we put it back. And there we are. So we're going to recycle some of these fishermen's weights we found. <laughs> so yeah. Look at that. It's a beautiful feather star. To uh, show you now, these are normally found in fresh water, relative of the starfish. And the thing is, they've got little, if you look at the bottom of it, it's got nice little uh, feet, from a, want of a better word, which attaches itself to the rock with. And these arms, then, they uh, expand in the water and they catch. The plankton and things and draw it back into their mouth. If you uh, see down there, pretty little thing. I mean, have a look underneath. Yeah, so under this rock now, the usual crabs, and there's lots of these green worms, and as you can see, I'm not sure exactly what species they are. Just to show the actual colours we get here in uh, here in Wales. This time I'll pick the worm up and we'll put it in there for a look. As a matter of fact. There he is. Yeah, and we put him back with the crabs and whatever else he was with. Yeah, so we uh, don't know how the tide's just about to come over. This stone now, it's been uh, hollowed out in a hole in the middle. So they would have used this before they could have uh, found iron or steel. To put rope in as an anchor for a ship. 
and underneath as we can see uh, there's a shore rockling or a three bladed rockling a small one put him back there and where the gobi go? Yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, this would have been used as an anchor. Weighs about 20 kilos, something like that. Right, amongst this seaweed, now we're on the middle shore, you're looking for something called the flat periwinkle that lives uh, at this level. And they feed on the seaweed and the algae growing on them. And they come in different colours. Uh, you get greens and yellows. See them? That's a full size and you get them in uh, different colours like I say greens, yellows, browns, blacks, greys and there's other ones there you see. Uh, pretty things. Right, David just found this rock now which is uh, limestone. All these holes uh, have been made by, it could be by a number of things. This is limestone, so it could have been done by something called a rock boring sponge which uh, covered the rock and used acid to etch itself into the rock uh, for, to have a stable uh, environment to live in. Or some of them could be small keel worms, uh, which again bore into rock, and it could have been small piddock shells, but my guess is uh, it's a rock boring sponge. Right, again, now we found a nice spot of uh, the flat periwinkles. Just to show how vivid the colours are, they're uh, quite striking, yeah? And uh, see, you've got little green ones. See, beautiful little animals. Uh, like I say, they're mollusks which are, are grazers and they eat maybe the algae off, uh, off the seaweed and sometimes the seaweed itself. Just on uh, this uh, middle show again now. As you can see, it looks like there's not much life here, but there's uh, plenty of limpets with greys. There's the barnacles, but in this particular area, I don't know why, but the dog welts, which are edible, they seem to be a lovely translucent white colour. And the dog welts here, they're, uh, they'll be boring into, using the acid to bore into the barnacles to eat them. Uh, and other shellfish and any mussels or things that's what they do and if you look around you can see they're uh, very common but this area seems to be that uh, they're very white they come in all different colours but it's a uh, nice spot what are you? What are you? What are you? 